Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Anime Theory, where we're celebrating Halloween, but instead like two days after Halloween. I mean hey, think of my video like some leftover Halloween candy, it's still delicious even after a couple days. Also, random question, what's everybody's favorite candy? I myself have an unhealthy love for Kit Kat bars. I genuinely want to know the answer though, so answer in the comments. So, looks like it's time to return to my favorite horror anime and the first anime I ever watched, the Higurashi series. In fact, this return won't be too short. I have three other theories I want to cover before we get to December. Why December? Oh, don't worry, you'll find out. So, have you guys noticed a bit of a pattern with me this year? I sure have been attacking fan favorite characters, including my beloved L. I guess it's a bit of a habit of mine. I mean, if you love something, you need to be able to make a video tearing it apart, am I right? But hey, I get it. You want a bit of a change of pace. Sure then, how about instead of making a fan favorite character seem worse, how about we take a character that no one likes and somehow make them seem even worse than before? Sound like fun to you? I mean, I sure hope so, because regardless, we're diving into a theory that just might make Higurashi a little bit more uncomfortable. Without further ado, let's go! Higurashi's main story comprises of many different arcs, all of which take place over the same general time frame. It's basically a time loop, but in this case each arc follows a slightly different path. Most of them involve one of the main cast of characters contracting Hinamizawa Syndrome and then proceeding to slaughter all of their friends before succumbing to the horrible disease. Most of these arcs approach a more over-the-top set of events, making them a bit unrealistic on occasion, yes, but also managing to remain that much creepier because of it. Heck, some of these arcs are downright scarring. I think just mentioning fingernails is likely to get at least a couple of you watching a bit on the edge. One general type of arc, however, comprises of something much more realistic and a topic that's a bit uncomfortable for most people to discuss. Thankfully, I don't care since I talk about this kind of stuff in all of my videos so far, so here we go. In both Arc 3 and Arc 7 of the main story, the plot takes an odd turn as Sadako ends up living with her uncle Tepe Hojo. And good old Tepe, well, he's just a wonderful guy. I mean, I don't think we'll ever find a guy so wonderful. Of course, I'm being sarcastic, this guy is an absolute monster. After reuniting with his niece, who doesn't have any family left, mind you, he decides the best course of action is to begin abusing her to a ridiculous degree. It's so ridiculous, in fact, that they manage to get the entire town, including the people who previously hated her family line, to try and save her from her horrible fate. And I mean, her fate was pretty horrible. Suffering the kind of abuse she was is terrible for anyone to go through. But, what if I told you that things are even worse than you know? What if Tepe's evil intentions go much farther than you'd expect? Get ready, things are going to get real dark real quick. Now, I think we need to look at what's going on with Tepe himself at the moment. The dude originally was in a relationship with two separate girls, his previous wife Tamae Hojo and Rina. Before the series actually begins, Tamae is killed by Sadako's brother Satoshi, who later went completely insane. So already, he was out one girl, and Rina doesn't last long either. Now Rina, she's... well, she's not known to hang around the greatest of people. And her eventual death in these arcs is what causes Tepe to go back and live in the house with Sadako. I mean, we know this guy is pretty disgusting considering the company he kept as far as women went, but now he's all out of women. Well, he was all out of women. Yes, I'm serious. There's a reason why he specifically wanted Sadako to live with him. You see, he wasn't just trying to get free chores out of the girl, no. What he wanted was something much darker. He wanted to make Sadako a sort of supplementary wife, one that would never leave him. Don't believe me? Well, why don't we look at the evidence? So we already know the guy is out a wife and a mistress, and we know the guy is basically a garbage person, so this idea doesn't sound too unbelievable. But trust me, this isn't all the evidence. Firstly, let's look at exactly what he makes Sadako do. It's mostly basic chores, things like going and getting groceries and cooking. Now, the benefits are obvious, because if she does them, he doesn't have to. Notice, however, that many of the things that she's forced to do, like the previously mentioned cooking, are typically applied to the wife. Just saying, that's the stereotype for this, I'm not the one forcing her to do it, so no, I'm not the sexist here. 
just pointing out that these are stereotypical things that wives do in different forms of media. And if Sadako doesn't do these things correctly, this is when Tepe resorts to mental and physical abuse. It's obvious by the amount of bruises and marks she's shown to have that he is indeed physically abusing her, but mentally he's putting on some heavy manipulation as well. He fully well knows Sadako's attachment to her older brother. He uses his untouched room as a sort of threat. If Sadako tries to leave, her brother's room, one of the only remnants of his existence, will be destroyed. By continually bringing this up, he ensures that Sadako won't leave. Regardless of how much he abuses her, she won't leave because she can't leave, and he knows this full well. This kind of manipulation is used commonly in relationships where the dominant one tries to force the other to stay. This kind of abuse, while pretty extreme, has many other real-life equivalents, and many of these cases all involve fear tactics to keep the abused nearby at all times. As long as Sadako is nearby, she can never tell anyone to save her, and as long as nobody can save her, he can continue to abuse her over and over. In fact, if he hadn't been stopped, we would have likely seen things get much more brutal. Heck, at the end of Arc 3, he leaves her in a hot bath for hours as a way of disciplining her. Had Keiichi not stepped in, and had the series not been in a time loop, these punishments would have likely gotten more and more brutal as time went on. Eventually, they would become a norm for her, as all of the abuse slowly destroys her mind. She would become an empty husk, unable to do anything independently. And because of her inability to get over her lost brother, she wouldn't try to leave, no matter how bad it got. But here's where things get really sick. Notice that, in a lot of cases he has no problem putting his hands all over her. Well, as she would get older, this likely would only get worse and worse. He wasn't in a relationship with Rina because he liked her personality, let's just put it that way. Not only is he trying to raise a wife that will be obedient, dependent on him, and entirely broken mentally, but he's trying to get a new person to take advantage of. He's not just after a free maid, and he's not just after her mind, he's after her body as well. When the time would come, he would likely get much more forceful and disgusting, and at that point, there'd be nothing stopping him. Tepe Hojo is a disgusting person, not just because of his multiple relationships, not because of his genuinely horrible personality, and not just because of his abuse of Sadako and Satoshi. When he lost his wife and his lover, he took it upon himself to go after a poor defenseless girl, one who was unable to leave. Using mental and physical abuse, he forced her to be an obedient servant, doing all of the cleaning and cooking. In time, however, he intended to completely destroy her fragile mind, and make himself much more than just a servant. He intended to make a subservient wife, one who'd deal with anything he dished out without complaining or running away. So yes, he was bad before, but this goes far beyond that. Tepe isn't just a bad person, he's a disgusting one, and easily one of the most screwed up individuals in all of anime. But hey, that's just my crazy theory. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. And hey, if you like this video, why not subscribe and go check out some of my other videos, and I've got two more Higurashi theories coming and maybe some filler stuff in between, and look forward to December, we got some really, really cool stuff coming. But in the meantime, there's not much else to say besides, see you later.